was your first job immediately following the release of this movie? Oh, man, hiding. <laughs> um, I don't think I did my, I kept bugging the mirror to try to get footage, I don't know why, but I could say, can we have some part of the film so I can try and get more acting? Or, I think I just kept going out on auditions and being denied because they weren't making like Tarzan in LA or Southern Rambo or... So yeah, I, think, I don't think I had anything after that. It's too uh, traumatic. Uh, Julie. How short did you cut your hair in, when you had to wear the wig? It's a short... It, um, we don't have that DVD. Um, it was, I cut it all real short, just everything off. Enough to drive a mirror bananas. But actually, in that one shot there when we're fighting, you can see that he knocks the wig off. So he knocks the wig off. The back of hair now is pretty short. Like I want to do now, but now I have to keep it for I don't know how much longer. Guitars. Oh, yes, fellow in the plan. All right, so they found you. Did they find the guy who played Frank? So you could be in Samurai Cop too. Yeah, Mark Frazier was Frank Washington. We found him. The, the biggest find we just found was the guy that played uh, Fujiyama the, with the mullet. We, we couldn't find him. We found him through Facebook. And we got a hold of his, uh, his wife and his son, and they wanted to be in it. He's like, oh, no. I, I said, listen, bro, if I can come back, then you can come back. So he'll probably be at the L.A. screening, and I'll try and convince him when I see him. But I think the only person we're looking for is Janice, my long-lost uh, love. She's the only one we haven't been able to locate. Okay, uh, a fellow up in the corner up there had a question. How does it feel when you beat the other samurai? When I think, yeah. uh, actually, Robert was just happy to get out of there. We shot all that in like, I don't know, it was actually multiple days up there on that ranch, but uh, it was just so dumb because we had the same thoughts that you guys had, which was it's not a sword bucking, you know, swashbuckling fight. That's why that you, know, you picked up those the samurai swords were all damaged. From, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like bread trying to show how nice Because the true samurai sword is like just unbelievably razor sharp. But. <laughs> I saw some, oh, I saw this fellow in the tie-dye. Go ahead. Oh, it's, no, it's not tie-dye. It's a tropical <laughs> shirt. Oh, a tropical one. <laughs> Did, not a question, but a fun piece of trivia. Did you realize that when Zadar gets out for that final battle, that's a Suzuki samurai that he's getting out of? Yes, we did. We <laughs> made, made jokes about that on the set. That was his car, and then I think that uh, Jag that he pulled up when he was outside the, wherever my place was, that was his too. We all used our own cars. You see, I was holding the Oregon plate still on that. I found a prelude. I hadn't really become a real California actor yet. Alrighty, there, right in the middle of this handout. Do you ever get recognized on the street? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know having my serenity island, nobody knew who I was. And that's what's the funny thing about this, is that what I'm doing now, no one has any idea. They still don't, and I've been keeping it a secret from guys at work, because I'm trying to see how long I can hide. <laughs> because I know that this will be all over my office, and bikini shots everywhere. That's all right. You said I was in sport in a pot belly, I guess it was all right. <laughs> That's, that's actually good timing. Um, uh, you know, it, it, one of the reasons we're out here uh, again with this film is it's coming out on Blu-ray really soon. And uh, I promised the distributor that we'd play a, a scene from the Blu-ray so people could see how uh, the quality remastered quality, quality of, the, of the film is. And, uh, hey, Jim, are you up there in the projection booth? What scene did you play? Who was that? Can we play that clip from the Blu-ray really quick? And then we'll go back to the Q&A. But I want to show people the remastered uh, Samurai Cop. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. You thought of everything. Well, you can't have a birthday without a cake. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, man. I'm going to go over the butt to butt. I'm going to go over the butt to butt. Yeah, the butt wide classic. Point here now. I've left. Of course, I came out here just 
like to visit my brother and flew out. There was no uh, commercial or anything as far as people paying me to be here. But the uh, director of the film, obviously, I don't know if you guys know about that Kickstarter that's up for uh, Samurai Cop 2. And it was basically yeah, for, for you guys, uh, for all the fans to get memorabilia, this and that. I think he's trying to raise like 50 grand for CGI. And if you just saw that ass shot, I guarantee you, I will need CGI on my head. <laughs> if they get me into anything, but... Uh, yeah, I think that comes out on uh, Blu-ray on the 30th of September yep. on Amazon, I think. so. And I have postcards for Samurai Cop, too, so hit me up on the way out and give you more information on that. Sweet. Okay, I saw a uh, fellow up here. Go ahead. Yeah, are you going to try to get the Costa Rican dudes from the Mexican? <laughs> I think he is trying to locate that guy, too. He was actually in two other of uh, Amir's films before that one that he did with me. He played in uh, Young... Rebels, uh, I think he was, or no, uh, Gypsy, he played an Indian, but he wasn't being, you know, over the top. And then uh, he was in Killing American Style, he played the doctor, Japanese doctor, so I didn't realize, I mean, all that, I'm just realizing half of the people that were, yeah, because I just thought when uh, Greg's down here watching some of Amir's movies, and I went, oh, that's Jose I didn't put that together. <laughs> okay, um, okay, yeah, go ahead. Promotional consideration from Adidas? Yeah, I don't know. Was that the jacket I had on? Maybe I, I saw that too. I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I, I look back on that leather coat that I was wearing. Maybe that had an Adidas logo in it. I mean, I had I don't know. Not like anybody was going to see it. Where it had. It was the Dar's shoes. Yeah. Oh, and that so that last shootout scene when you were wondering if it was the same uh, location. Remember, I said we have one more thing to do, and then actually that was a wardrobe change into the. Tennis shoes and tank top. I think we went to go find Yama, whatever his name is. Yamashita. 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 I still speak fluent Japanese. Yeah. Yama. <laughs> Alrighty, let me see how it is. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm just curious what you do for work now. I actually work in the. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You guys know like Comic Con, those big conventions that, I mean, just to be, that's why I was actually hoping nobody there would see. Um, I uh, work in Southern California, I'm in charge of the, uh, kind of a liaison between uh, the management and the union workers as far as putting on trade shows. And obviously Comic Con's one of our biggest shows. So I was trying to make sure no posters, because they passed out all this Samurai Coup, uh, Cop 2 stuff. So I was hoping that nobody was there, and I made it, so nobody saw it. But I think next year is uh, when the movie will premiere, I guess, at Comic-Con, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, any other questions out there? Go, uh, go ahead. Uh, were there any scenes that were left you know, on the cutting room floor? <laughs> so I wish I could tell you yes, but as we see, this took, what, four hours to screen this? <laughs> I well, used every every bit of footage, yeah. And, can, and that's what's funny in a lot of those scenes where you see me, especially in the restaurant, doing um, the reverse angle because I don't know, I don't think Amir shot that, which is amazing. But um, all that was just done in a little office in Amir's uh, Westlake uh, house where I'm just talking to a lamp or I'm over here looking at the couch. And, then, and that's why I'm so angry because it's like I can't believe we have to come back for reshoots after three months. But uh, yeah, I think he used everything. Yeah, we started the film in June of '90, and Amir told me at that time, "Oh, it'll just be three weeks." And I thought, "All right." And then uh, we finished principal photography August. November was come back and do all those loop lines where you hear Amir half the time. <laughs> and then he says, we're done. And then that's when I cut my hair short. And then three months went by. And then you see in that one office scene where that calendar on the wall says January of 91. Uh, <laughs> that was actually January of 91. And, uh, with that wig on, and it was just like, and that's what frustrates. And if you look in that movie, you can see how much footage there is with a wig, and it just lets you know how much footage that apparently Amir didn't have. <laughs> and I was just like, and I just got, because I thought originally when he took me to the wig shop to buy the wig, that it would be from distance, you wouldn't really be able to tell, but we had close-ups, and I was like, oh man, so. But yeah, I think everything that he shot was up there. Okay, anybody else out there with any kind of a curiosity nibbling away at your domes? You were first, go ahead. Are there any injuries on this set? Did anybody get injured? No, just that one guy with his arm off, but that's about it. No, I'm surprised, yeah. No, nobody got hurt. What was it? I'm sorry. What makes you get into movies? I advise myself that. 
uh, like I said, I grew up in Portland and was in theater, and uh, of course I was bigger, and uh, I think you guys have heard my interviews on that 80s picture house. Um, it was about 270, but I had always done um, comedy, and I just thought, let me go to Hollywood, I think, because you, you kind of find a niche, and mine was just going to be this big, giant, you know, guy that was funny, and uh, when I started working for Stallone, then I lost weight, and then the, just the more weight I lost, and it just became more of a, like a leading man type, which was, you know... Death, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I just uh, thought I'd come there and be a big star. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> just took 20 years. Uh, yeah. okay. there? Uh, when, when you guys were shooting this movie, um, did you how much of it did you think you were playing straight? Like, it, I mean, obviously, there's parts where there's jokes and stuff, but. Yeah, I think towards the middle of it, I started getting immature on shit just because I knew it was going to be bad. But I think we all played it. Obviously, you see Robert. Robert's a really an intense actor. Um, and he was serious. We were all pretty serious about it. After we got past arguing with Amir about the dialogue and how ridiculous it was, then you just, you just do it. I mean, that son of a bitches, I went round and round with him for hours saying, we don't say sons of a son of a bitches. <laughs> I said, you can say, now I'm telling these sons of bitches. Like, no, that does not sound good. Say son of a bitches. <laughs> so, you know why? Tuco from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Is that what? I just... But a lot of it was his, his uh, Iranian um, accent. And then, like I said in some of my interviews, he just was used to that old old West dialogue. Shoot, shoot him. And, um, but yeah, once we knew that it was kind of... Down here, we just try to give respect to him and just get through it. So, uh, I saw somebody right in this area. Uh, I think it's uh, back in the blue shirt. Have you guys started shooting for a Sarai Cup theater? No, they're just the uh, scripts basically getting wrapped up now, and they're just trying to find how many more people that they can rustle up from the original cast so they can just kind of write in the. Uh, so, is there like an anticipated date of when they go start shooting? Yeah, November. We're going to shoot it right in the middle of November. It should be done by January, and then they were talking about sending it to some festivals. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I mean, you know, I'm just like, just put it out do it real quick, and let's get it to the theater. Okay, uh, right there. Secured for yeah, I guess he's been pretty ill, but they, he did. A, I just got an email from Greg, the director, yesterday, and I guess he agreed to come for like three days. So I don't know what we're gonna. I don't know if we're pulling the fucking sword out of him. Because I mean, I mean, he had simulated that he died there, but yeah, he'll be back. Everybody thought he died, but maybe he didn't. Yeah, maybe he didn't. Uh, I think uh, have your question, and then I'll take your question. Is there a particularly weird piece of direction you ever got from a mirror that stuck with you? Uh, the, those love scenes, I mean, if you can believe that. He was actually on the, <laughs> in the scenes with Janice and I, Amir was always in a position where he could just really see the girls. <laughs> and he was at the foot of the bed and he's just down there, he's going, hey, kiss her slow, man. <laughs> and, this is, and you can see Janice looked down at him a couple of times. But, uh, that and he always wanted me to speak lower, like this, like sly. And, but uh, it just, I don't know, every day was an adventure. Everybody said, what's your favorite scene of the movie? And it was like every day that we came to work, for me and Mark, it was just like, what the hell are we going to do today? Uh, especially with the wig. Once you got to the wig, it was just like, it was just fun, but uh, it was monotonous. Okay, uh, go ahead. Oh, is this the only Kill Me been in, or is there anything else we can unearth? Uh, the other one was American Revenge, which I had done before this one, and that's uh, some clips of that have been on YouTube. I don't know. I actually have a uh, VHS copy of that, <laughs> but I gave it to Greg Hatanaka. I don't know if they're trying to find out who owns that, but that was the first film I did in November of '90, and then Samurai Cop was, uh, or November of '89, excuse me, and then November or June of '90 was Samurai Cop. And then I think it was 95, I did the pilot for JAG. Uh, quick little three shots, something like that. No big deal. And then I just disappeared. <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, how about you? So knowing what you know now, if you could go back, would you do it again? I mean, was it, is it fun to look back on, or? Uh, yeah, well, I think now, yeah, because so much time has passed. But I think I would, because again, like I said in some of my interviews, um, it's, it's a gift to be given what I was given there as far as leading you know, man in the, in the whole movie. I mean, regardless of what it became. But that's quite a compliment to be given that, because most of the time you're just trying to get little bit parts or, or uh, you know, a line here and there, and then actually have the whole movie 
And I, I've told everybody before, I do not apologize. That is 80% horrible acting. And, uh, but like I said, that would have been probably one where you kind of pay your dues and you learn and, and you watch and see that, all right, calm down on the facial expressions, the eyes. The, uh, uh, but there was, there was no, not to be a thespian, but there was really no character of information on Joe. Uh, Amir just said he's from San Diego. So. <laughs> the movie and I'm going, but he says here that I speak fluent Japanese, am I going to do that? He says, no, no, no fluent Japanese. I mean, we had no mar training with the samurais for it. it just, so that's why I said there's just so many off kiltered moments during my performance, which is just ridiculous. But. Okay, any other, uh, oh, here we go, way up in the corner. Uh, how many takes did, did you do to do the spinning samurai sword? That was all one, yeah. Everything, every, uh, Amir never did double takes. <laughs> And that was even stupid because I go, it looks like a baton. It doesn't, that's not a samurai guy. I'm spinning it around like I'm on some marching band. You know, so. But yeah, everything was one take, which was funny because Amir just didn't have the money for film. And that's why you see in that one police, the guy kind of stutters through his line. But uh, uh, yeah, that's why even in my <laughs> rambling monologue, it was just like one shot and that was it. But we, he would, you know, cut in, he'd do a master shot wide and then come in close. But other than that, there was really no retake, so. Okay, uh, any other uh, questions going on in, in your minds? In this... Can we get photo ops after the show? Oh, man, sure. Without the shirt. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> that's very sweet. There's an old man up here now. It's just, uh, anybody that's seen that YouTube Has anybody I'm seen the YouTube it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand that? I, I have to explain this so I don't look like a douchebag. <laughs> When my daughter had kept harassing me to put something up to let the world know that I was still alive, I was sitting at my place and I put the camera up, I had shorts on and no shirt on, and I just went through what, I, what you see and then I sent it to her and I said, if I do do what you want me to do, is this what you would want me to say? And the minute she had it, she put it out on YouTube. So, after me yelling at her, but then like, I don't know, two hours later, my email just blew up. It was just amazing, just from, I don't know, all over the world, people were just uh, sending things to that IMDB address and that uh, B. Machiavelli address, and it just became Do it for the fans. Crazy. Well, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, if we want to do photo ops or anything, we'll need to clear the theater, but there's a, there's a little photo area right in the lobby, so uh, feel free to hang out and take some pictures. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Thank you to Wolf Choir for bringing me to be Bingo all the way up to Portland. Thanks guys for joining us. Thank you everybody.